Let's reset and let's see if this works. Okay, player two has won. So I died, there's only one player left and he won. And now the game has ended and we're both in the lobby. We will be making a continuation or basically a part two for our last round system video, our video we made on a round system. So last video we made a very simple and fundamental round system. It's nothing much to it, but uh, I've got suggestions that um, I should make a part two on how to, for example, make the round end when uh, all the players died. Or maybe there's a winner in the game and you want the round to end when there's a winner. So when there's, I guess, one player left maybe. Um, so that's, that's what we'll be doing today. So first thing first, we need the uh, we need something to define who is playing and who isn't playing. So for example, who is in the lobby and who is in the map. So what we can do is we can add a service called Teams. Now this, sometimes you won't see it in the Explorers tab. So what you want to do is to go on the model, uh, model tab up here, uh, go to Advanced and click these two red and blue thingy-majingies right here click on that and then you'll see uh, the okay, I already added it but you'll see it here in insert service and you can add teams so by that this is, this is just one way you can do it but uh, you can there's many ways you can actually um, define players like whether or not they're playing um, you can add like different var uh, values to them uh, but what I'll be doing is just adding teams so we can add the first team which will be the lobby team <clears throat> so the players in the lobby pretty self-explanatory uh, we'll make this auto assignable make sure that's auto assignable and then make this any color you want so you can put this as blue and then we duplicate this and then change this to playing so the, the, the players are playing now this you want not on auto assignable because you only want to assign it when they're like in the game when they teleport to the map and change this to a different color make sure it's a different color than the other team uh, so let's say this is a green <clears throat> okay so now we have the two teams okay make sure you did everything correctly now we're gonna go back to our script that we made the last video so if you don't uh, if you ha don't have this you definitely should uh, watch our, our first video on uh, round system because I explained everything you did here so we're gonna make a poopy pants I'm um, sorry I mean uh, let's just make some variables because why not um, so we're gonna do a local playing team team equal game that game that play game that teams that playing uh, that playing Okay, same thing now we'll do with the lobby, local lobby team equal game dot teams dot lobby. So there are two teams, we've defined them, we store them to values or variables. Now what we're gonna do first in the in round change connect that we've made, uh thingy, the in round change connect function, right? The connecting to a function. Uh, we're gonna have first the uh, when the player uh, when the player teleports to the map, right? So when the round has started, the player we're gonna teleport the player to the map, and after we do this, so this is gonna be right here. Uh, press enter. We're gonna enter another. This is another. Uh, we're gonna set the value, uh, not the value, the, not the value, but the team of the player to uh, the playing team. So this is after they teleport to the map, so they'll be in the round, so they're they'll be considered playing. So player, uh, players, player. That's the player that we define. Uh, dot team, which is part of player. Uh, dot yeah, dot team equals playing team. I think that should be correct, right? Playing that team equal playing team. So we assign their team to the playing team. So we know that they're uh, playing. Oops, stop. That's my bad. Uh. Anyways, okay. Now we can just copy and paste this when the round ends. So we know whenever the round ends, uh, all the players will be set back to uh, the player's team. The All the teams of the player will be set to the lobby. So because everyone is in the lobby at that point because the round has ended. Right. So now we have these two. Now, what if the player dies? Well, we want to make the player's team change when the player dies. Because if the, the, the let's say the player dies, right? And he's in the round, right? Then he's going to be teleported to the lobby. Okay, why well, like these ones again? Uh, anyways. Of course. So when the player dies, we want them. Uh, they we want we want their team to be uh, chained to the lobby team because they're not playing anymore because they died, right? So you want to do. Uh, and the first thing in the first uh, if statement, if round value equals true, which means uh, when, during the during when round is uh, during when round or during the round when the round has already started, anyways. So not when is in the lobby. Whatever when is in the lobby, right? Uh, so we want to do. 
uh, actually we define car right so we define this as the character of the player so what we want, what we want to do is do car uh, wait for child for child okay that's wrong okay I didn't yeah sorry child uh, humanoid that died connect function okay so this is just basically saying when the player has died so I think you should put this in a loop um, it should work uh, perfectly fine that's that's how I mean I, I found it to be working um, I did this many times before so it works for me um, so this is what I do and, that, and when the player dies we're gonna assign them to the player team uh, to the lobby team sorry the lobby team the player dot team equal lobby team okay uh, make sure oh, this should this should be changed to lobby team. So I copied and pasted. Uh, and after when the round has ended, of course, everyone should be in the lobby team uh, after that. Okay. So we done the first part, the change connect. Now, how do we check if how do we check uh, or how do we check? Uh, I guess not now. I mean, we want to check uh, whether or not every uh, if there's any player left in the playing team. And if there's no players left in the playing team, we want to end the round. So we go to the fundamental essential of fu fu round function, I guess you can say. So when you want to go to the round length, so when it's counting down the round, so this is the for loop for the round length. Uh, let's go in between here. Uh, so every time, so this is every second. It's counting down from the amount of seconds that the, the amount of seconds that is in the round, however, uh, however much it may be. And it'll count every second and it'll check basically every second. So what I want to do in every second we want to make a four IV loop. On every loop. And every loop we're gonna make like another basically, but this is one this one is a different so four I player in pairs. Game of pairs, game dot players, uh, get children. Okay, so this puts so this uh, puts all the players in the game into a table and we want to loop through them. And do end, okay. So we have this 4iv uh, 4iv in pairs loop, and this is so we can use this is so we can uh, check uh, all the players in the game. So before we do that, though, make sure we want to make a uh, make sure we make a table, and this table is just so we can know how many players are in the playing team. So we're going to do a local local playing equals table. So this is just a table for the amount of people that are playing. Just name it whatever you want. I'll just name it playing. So we're gonna do if player that team that name name equal players equals play. That's a double equation, sorry. Top double equals, sorry. And then table answer table that insert and we want to insert into the playing table of course because that's why, why we made it so we'll put this in the playing table and then comma the player I guess you can just put the player right uh, or the play that name uh, it doesn't really matter actually um, but put whatever you want so you, you just want to know how many players are left in the server or in, not in the server sorry. how many players left are in the round right so this will just uh, check how much players are in the round. Okay, so I think this is good. Uh, this is for the for I loop, so make sure everything you have is correct. Now outside of the for I loop, uh, let's see, okay. Okay, I think that's it. I'm not sure if there's something that I forgot. Um, anyways, so now we can make the cases. So for example, we when we want um, to check if there's no players left, we want to do if number of playing equals zero, then we can do status. We change the status. You know, okay, that's not how I spell, but that's whatever. That's the the variable. Uh, so status of value equals everyone has died. Everyone has died. Okay, sorry, that's the only one. Okay, I'm getting mixed up. Sorry. Uh, and then we can do oh wait wait three or something. And then break. So this breaks out of the for loop uh, that counts down the round length. So it already will, it will end at that point. So when we break, it will basically uh, basically end the round will end. 
So then we can do if number of playing number of playing equals one, then so at this point, uh, I guess you can call that the winner of the game if there's only one uh, player left. So we'll do uh, number of players. Then we can do status that value equals. Uh, we can do actually. Um, we can do the name of the player has one. So we can do um, playing, and then index one because there will be only one player left so there that one player their index will be shifted to the first place because that's how tables work dot dot has won the game or something like that okay and that's the name or dot name i think dot name yeah because we put the no never mind it's player where we put the player dot name so we can just do play playing one table the first index of the table which is the player name that's that won the game this last that's the last player you have and then we can do has won the game then we can do another way three break so it breaks out of the for loop that's counting down uh so basically the timer it breaks out of the timer and it ends and i think that should be it okay so make sure you have that for loop uh let's see okay 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 Okay, okay, um, okay, that's pretty good. So I uh, should work. Let's see if this, uh, let's test this out, shall we? Um, okay. <sighs> okay, um, let's test this out. Now we can make this, uh, we'll test this out in the local server. Let's make a test, two test servers, or not two test servers, but a two test clients. So we have two players, we're gonna test it out. Uh, you could add like something like swords or something so you can kill people, but we're gonna we're gonna kill ourselves. Uh, I know that sounds weird. We're gonna kill ourselves and see how well this works. This is this is just the server. Uh, okay. Or maybe I should do that. Maybe I should like add a swords or something to it. Uh, okay, there we go. We got the. We got the. Got the clients now. Okay. So the game will end. Okay, the, the, we have two players right now. Let's reset and let's see if this works. Okay, player two has won. So I died, there's only one player left and he won. And now the game has ended and we're both in the lobby. So basically that's 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 it. I mean, there's nothing much to it. Oh, what the hell, that's weird. What the hell is, oh, never mind. That, I think that's built into Roblox, okay. That's weird. So let's test this again. So if I die, for example, uh, someone kills me with a sword, boom. Uh, I'm in the lobby and the player two, the surviving player has won and I'm back in the lobby because the game has just ended and yeah that's how it works so I hope you enjoyed this video if you want more you should definitely subscribe and like because why not it helps the algorithm so more people can see this video and yeah we'll see you guys in the next video and I'm hopping off this base plate <laughs>